one of the things I was thinking about, I was thinking that all of us in here this morning, we all grasp and we all understand the power of a personal testimony. Advertisers use this tool all the time in an effort to get people interested in their product and then ultimately to get them to, to buy it. And there's something persuasive about seeing and hearing a person who's a satisfied customer or who's had their life greatly changed or they've had their life greatly improved or benefited because of something else. And it kind of gets you thinking. You think, wow, okay, if that worked for them, man, maybe that'll work for me. And it's really powerful if you know that the person that's speaking out has nothing to gain personally. And uh, boy, I tell you, that really gets you thinking, you know, because they have nothing to gain. They just want you to know how great it is. And would you guys agree with me this morning that the greatest decision that anybody on this earth could make would be to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? If you already know Christ, you have something very powerful in your possession that's very, very, very powerful in persuading others to accept Jesus Christ. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your personal testimony, your story, what they just sung about. And you say, well, what is that? In your handout, it says it's simply telling others what Christ has done in your life. It's simply telling others what Christ has done in your life. The last two weeks, we talked about a man that was so messed up, and his life was a total train wreck. And Jesus Christ saved this guy and, and, and changed his life. And I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but this banner over here, uh, to, over here that, that says the mission is to go, down here, the verse, Mark 5, 19, that's a reference from the story that I preached on the last two weeks where Jesus radically changes this guy's life. And when Jesus goes to leave, the guy's like, Jesus, I want to go with you. And Jesus Christ says to him, no, he says, I want you to go back, I want you to go home, go to your friends, and then notice the banner says, Jesus said, tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. He said, no, you know what, I don't want you to go with me, I want you to stay, and I want you to tell them of the great things that God has done for you. In other words, I want you to share your story. I want you to share your story. I want you to share your personal testimony. And everyone in here that's saved, you've got a testimony. In each of us, it's unique. It's different. We all come from different backgrounds, how we came to know the Lord. But all of us in here have a story if we're saved. All of us in here, uh, we, we've got a story. We have a personal testimony. And, and it's simply you telling what great things that God has done for you. How many of you in here this morning could testify and you could say, honestly, God's done great things in my life, amen? Has he? Yeah, and that's what it is, is you telling people the great things that God has done for you. Sharing your testimony with others is, is a very powerful way to, to share the gospel of Christ with other people because think about this, the people that you know really well, I'm talking about family members that may not know the Lord, friends that may not know the Lord, coworkers, neighbors, the people that you know really well in your life, if you were to say to them, hey, I want to do an eight-week Bible study with you, they may be like, thank you, but I believe I'll pass on that. If you say, well, will you go to church with me? There's a good chance they might say yes. They may say no. They may never go to church with you. But you know what? They will let you share your story with them because that's what friends do. Friends talk to friends. Friends confide in friends. Friends trust friends. Friends buy products from friends, right? And, and they do business with friends. And so that's what friends do. So as a friend, they'll let you share your story with them. Why? It takes no commitment on their part. All they got to do is sit and listen. They don't have to agree to a Bible study. They don't have to agree to go to church. They just sit there and listen to you. And your testimony has the ability to be able to see lives change. The, the story today that we're going to look at is in John chapter 4. I need to turn there too. So go ahead and turn there to John chapter number 4. John, the gospel of John. If you don't have a Bible, grab the Bible in front of you and use that because we want you to definitely look into God's Word. But in John chapter number 4, 
we have a story here of Jesus changing the life of a woman that he met at a well in Samaria. Jesus Christ, this is textbook, man, on my message last week. Uh, last week's message was about becoming part of somebody else's story. In other words, you impacting somebody else for Christ. And you remember last week what I told you that the first principle was look for divine opportunities? That's exactly what Jesus did. He comes to this well, and guess what? There's one lady there. So it's Jesus and one other lady that are getting water. And he's like, man, this is a great opportunity. He didn't miss it. The second thing I preached to you last week is that you got to engage others in conversation. you got to open up the conversation some, at some point. That's what Jesus did. He engaged this lady in conversation. He began to talk to her. And as he began to talk to her, he took the discussion and he turned it towards spiritual topics and spiritual things. Well, by the time he got done talking to this woman, she believed on Christ. She had put her faith and her trust in Jesus Christ. And after Jesus changed her life, this woman, the Bible says, left her water pot there at the well. She made a beeline into town, and she began to tell anybody who would listen to her about the encounter that she had had with Jesus Christ. She began to tell her story, her testimony, all over town. And it was impacting. And, and lives were changed. It made a difference in people's lives. And you know, if this woman at the well can do it, you and I can do it. If this woman can do it, we can do it. And so this morning, I want to go to this text, and I want to give you some principles about how you can share your story with other people. How many of you know the Lord as your Savior? If you know Jesus, say amen right now. Do you know him? You have a story. How do you tell it? Number one is this. This is the first thing. It'll help you. This is going to be very practical, very helpful. Number one, tell them about your life, B.C., and that stands for before Christ, right, before Christ. And uh, most of us in here have a past, right? How many of you all have a past? Raise your hand. Okay, good. I do too. And, and it ain't all pretty, is it? No, we've all got a past. We all can, I think most of us in here, unless you were blessed enough, and some of you may be there, some of you may be blessed enough that you, remember, you don't ever remember your life really without Jesus because you were raised in a Christian home, you got saved at a young age and trusted in Christ. So you don't really remember much of your life before Christ. Most of us in here, probably that isn't true of us. I know it isn't of me. Uh, most of us in here can remember our life before Christ. We can remember what our life was like before Jesus Christ was our Savior. This woman right here, she had a past. In fact, look at verse 15. It says, the woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. She thinks I'm in the clear now. <laughs> she has no clue. Jesus knows her past. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. In other words, yep, that's true. Verse 18, for thou hast had five husbands. And the woman whom thou now, uh, I'm sorry, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that sayest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Jesus Christ reveals himself to this woman. And after she puts her faith in him, she believed on him. Look what happens. Look at verse 25. It says, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, and when he is come, he'll tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I am the Messiah. And then let's skip down to verse number 28. It says, the woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and saith to the men, come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She goes into town, and she begins to say, hey, I've got this past, and he knew all about it, but he still loved me and welcomed me in his family. He still wanted me. I mean, this is an amazing man. This guy told me all about my past. He has got to be the Christ. And so she begins to tell this story. Well, all of us in here have a life, B.C. 
We all have a life before Christ. Uh, one songwriter wrote this. He said, from time to time, I remember how it was when it was just me and not us. And I sure like it better now than then. You see, I never did like me without him. And, uh, and in that, this song goes on and he talks about how mean and nasty he was before he knew the Lord. And he said, I never did like me without him, you know. And, and so th we've all got that, you know. We all have that life before Christ. And as you share your testimony and your story, you can share it. Now, you know, let me just say this. You don't have to be too detailed and too graphic. You can be. You just kind of, it depends on the situation. For some people, their past is very painful. They don't want to talk about it. And I get that. I understand that. And maybe the longer you're saved and you know the Lord, the more comfortable you'll get talking about elements of your past. I know Constance, uh, who you hear sing a lot with the choir and she sings specials. I've just begun to hear things about her past, and I've known her for years, that she's just kind of began to open up and share about a lot of the abuse that she had being raised up. Uh, in an extended family member's home. And now she's beginning to share that with other people. Sometimes it takes a while to be able to share certain things. I know we have a lady in our church that shared a testimony at a woman's meeting about how she lived, was very entrenched in a homosexual lifestyle. But she got saved. She came to know the Lord. She's now married, a member of our church. They have two beautiful children. She, she's okay sharing that. She shares that testimony of her life B.C., before Christ. And there probably was a time when maybe she wouldn't have been comfortable sharing all that, but now she is. You know, you look at the Apostle Paul, he had a rough past. And the Apostle Paul, sometimes he got pretty graphic when he would describe his past life before Christ. In fact, in Acts 26, 9, he said, many things contrary to the name of Jesus I did. Many things. Con did anybody in here ever do anything contrary to the name of Jesus before you got saved? Anybody? I, 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 yeah, I, I said it in the 945 service, and it was just me and three people that would admit it, you know. And I'm like, man, we got a bunch of lily white people in here, let me tell you. But uh, then finally they all kind of agreed, you know. And I, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, he said, I did a lot of things contrary to the name of Jesus, a lot. And then he begins to detail it, and it's pretty graphic. He says, uh, he says man, before I knew the Lord... He, he, I'll just read you some of the things I wrote them down. He said, I shut up the saints in prison. He said, I went and got saints and put them in prison. He said, not only that, when they were put to death, some of them were executed. I, he said, I gave my voice against them. Paul said, I punished believers in every synagogue. I'd find them and I'd punish them. I compelled them to blaspheme. He said, I chased them from town to town like animals. Paul sometimes would get very graphic when he would give his testimony and he would talk about his life before Christ. You say, I'm not comfortable with that. That's okay. But, but you know, even if you keep it general, when you begin to share your story, share with them what your life was before Christ. Why? Because it's going to show them the change, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But in your handout, it says, try to find elements of your past that they can identify with and relate to. Paul would do that all the time. And, uh, and, and uh, in, in your handout, it says there, as you share with them your previous lost condition, uh, you know, use that as a, as a tool to lead them to a couple key verses. It's in your handout. Look at Romans 3.23. Let's all say it together. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when you're talking to somebody about the Lord, have they sinned? Why? We've all sinned. How many in this room have sinned? All, right, everybody, yeah. And so when you're sharing the gospel with them and you're sharing your story with them, you can use that to say, you know what, I finally came to the point where I realized I had sinned against God. And you know, the Bible says all have sinned against God. And then use that to segue into the next verse, Romans 6, 23. What's the first part of that verse say? Say it with me. For the wages of sin is death. Is there a price tag on sin, yes or no? Wages means the price. There's a price for sin. What's the price that we all have to pay for sin? Death. Death. The wages of sin is death. Separation is what that word means from God separation from God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you tell them about your life BC, like this woman at the well. Now, you understand that in real time, that's only going to take about a minute or two. That's what you're going to do. You're going to spend about a minute or two telling them about your past life BC. You say, oh man, I got a lot of sin in my past. It's going to take me all day to tell them about that. No, 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 don't do that. All right. Don't, don't tell them that much. All right. You're just going to take a minute or two and tell them about your life BC. But then the second point I want you to get is this. Once you've done that, number two, make sure that you point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. Let them know that you found the answer. You found the purpose and the meaning to life, and it's Jesus. Church, can I encourage you today? I want you to remember this and never forget it. You can never go wrong bragging on Jesus Christ. Magnify him. Lift him up. Paul said, that's my heart's desire. I just want to magnify Jesus Christ. Look at the screen. He said in Philippians 1.20, According to my earnest expectation of my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also. He said, notice his desire. He said, I want Christ shall be what? Magnified. I want to lift up Jesus in my body, whether it be by life or by death. <laughs> Our testimony should not point him to us, point him to Jesus. Go to verse 29. Let me show you something here. Verse 29. What's the first four words? Come see him, man. I, don't you love that? I, I love it. Point him to Jesus, right? G, this woman goes into town. I want you to get the picture now, man. Her life has been radically changed. She has had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Her life has, I mean, instantly been changed. Instantly been changed. She goes high-tailing into town. She's like grabbing people. You're not going to believe what just happened. You're not going to believe it. Let me tell you. And so she starts telling all these people what happened. And she says, come on, come on, come see a man. Maybe he's still there. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man. She wanted him to see Jesus. And as you share your testimony, you want them to see Jesus. As you share your story of salvation, how you got saved, tell them how that you began to realize that, yes, I had sinned against God, but I realized there was an answer for my sin, and it's Jesus. And in your handout, there's a great verse there, Romans 5, 8. Look at it with me. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners. What's the last four words, church? Christ died for us. Let's say it again. Christ died for us. Is that hard to understand? Yes or no? It's not. Christ died for us. He took our place. He took our punishment. He paid the, what's the wages of sin? And what did Jesus do? He died. He took our place. He didn't deserve it. He never sinned. He took our place. He died for us. And so you want to make sure that you get to that as you share your story, and tell them how that you came to understand he rose from the dead, and that he's given you that life, and your testimony should point people to the sufficiency of Christ. Come see a man, she said. Come see a man. Make sure you point him to the sufficiency of Christ and make clear who Christ is and what he's done in your life. I love what Paul said before the Roman, uh, he, Paul got a chance to give his testimony before a Roman government official. His name was Felix. And when Paul was speaking to this government official, this is what Paul said in Acts 26, 23. He said, Felix, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people. Paul's a real guy like me and you. And, and, in, and that's also the, the text where he told him about his life, B.C., and all the things that he had done against, against the name of Jesus. And then he said, but you know what? I came to realize, Felix, Christ suffered for my sin. He died on the cross. He was the first to rise from the dead and to show light to us, to give us light. And so as you share your story, you share your, your testimony, whatever you want to call it, tell them how you responded to Christ. Tell them where were you when you got saved? Who led you to Christ? You know from last week, if you were here, my brother, we played the video. He led me to Christ. And, and my brother, we were in his car. Where did you get saved? You know, were you in church? Were you at your house? Were you in your bed? Maybe all alone, someone had witnessed to you and you just privately accepted Christ as your Savior? Um, were, were you uh, at work? You know, where were you? Were you, were you in the park? Were, 
where were you? Were you at work maybe on break and, and a co-worker led you to Christ? Share your story. Tell them how you got saved. And then in your handout it says, explain to them how your life has taken on new meaning since accepting Christ. You know, tell them in a few words. What, get them to understand what Christ has meant to you. What he's meant to your family. You know, I, 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 I told the, uh, the, the uh, 945 crowd, I said, man, I tell you what, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I, I wouldn't be here today. I would not be up here doing this at all. My life was going the opposite direction of this. And I wouldn't be here for sure. And I wouldn't have my lovely wife. I wouldn't have her because I got saved. I ended up going to Bible college in Jacksonville, and that's where she was. She got saved way before me, years before I did. She knew the Lord. She was raised in a Christian home. She knew Christ. Had I not come to know the Lord, then I wouldn't have met her. And that means we wouldn't have been here. And that means I wouldn't have my sons. And so as, as you share your story, you can share with people, you know, what Christ has done and brag on Jesus and what he's done in your life. Isn't it funny? I told my wife this morning, we were talking about 7 o'clock this morning. I'm like, isn't it funny how that we have no problem bragging on other things in our life that, that we're excited about? You know, it's like, man, let me tell you about this new car I got. Really? You got a new car? Yeah. Come on, I'll show it to you. And man, we show them, and look at this, look what this does, look at this gadget, and boy, boy, this thing drives good. And boy, let me tell you, you won't believe the deal I got on this. Man, I took that car salesman to the cleaners, boy, I tell you what. And we just brag on our new car and how good it drives and how comfortable it is, and oh, the gas mileage on this thing is amazing. And you know, or how about this? Oh, I just love my new phone. <laughs> this new phone has changed my life. Oh, you've got to have a phone like this. We'll tell our friends. This phone is amazing. I mean, it talks to me and everything. <laughs> you, you know, gives me a hug in the morning when I get up, you know. This phone is incredible. And, and you know, or we'll, t we'll brag on, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the restaurant we went to. Or we'll, we'll brag on this uh, great deal that we got at the store. And we'll, we'll brag on this, this great uh, you know, fitness program I've been on or weight loss program. And, you know, it's funny. We'll brag on things in our life that we really like and that we believe in. Let me tell you something. There's no greater thing for a Christian than Jesus Christ, and we ought to have no problem bragging on him to other people. It's the best thing that ever happened to us. Much better than a good restaurant. Much better than a car, a phone, right? I mean, Jesus... Point them to Jesus. Number three, trust God's word to do the work. You know, I, I want you to go back to our text. Go to verse number 40. All right, let's go down there. Let's see what happens once this lady hits town. Look at verse number 40. It says, so, uh, verse 40. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, unto Jesus, they besought him, Jesus, that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And they said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now go back to verse 41. And I want you all to tell me, what is the very last word of verse 41? Word. They said many more believe because of his, that's Christ's own word word. It appears that some of the people in town, she's like, hey, hey, you gotta, you gotta come on, come see a man. This man's amazing. This guy is the Messiah. And the Bible, which we're gonna look at in a minute, some of them believed right away. Some of them were tough nuts to crack. They were from the show me state. Anybody here from the show me state? I am, right? M Missouri mule, stubborn as a Missouri mule, right? And they're like, no, 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 we're not gonna buy that unless we hear him ourselves. But then he stays for two days they get a chance to hear Christ's word, and Christ's word works in them mightily and convinces them. There is so much power in God's word. Your personal testimony is great, but remember this. Your testimony, your story is not a substitute for God's word. Because ultimately, there's no authority in my testimony. The authority is in God's word. 
And that's why your testimony ought to be laced with Scripture. And uh, I, I want to encourage you as you share your story, give them the Romans road. You remember last week my brother said that when he got saved, he didn't know any Bible at all. And he began to witness to me and my family, my brother didn't know any Bible. He didn't know any Bible at all. But he said, somebody shared with me the Romans road of how to lead a person to Christ. And he said, I memorized those verses and I began to share them. He said, that's all I knew, but I began to, and, he's, and he wasn't just making that up. That was the truth. The night that he led me to Christ in his car, he showed me the Romans road. And what I did was, is I, the Roman, we call it the Romans road to salvation. Paul lays out the good news of Christ very succinctly. And there's about four key verses that you have to show people and that they have to accept and believe in order to be saved. Well, I put them all in your handout. If you look at the front of your handout, I'll have you put a star beside the ones that you really need to, uh, to know. And, and if you know these four verses, they're key verses. The first one is Romans 3.23, and you can put a star beside that. What does that say? For what? All have sinned. Then what does Romans 6.23 say? For the wages of sin is what? Death. So put a star beside that one. Turn your handout over. So the problem is sin, right? It separates us. But look at the answer. Romans 5.8, put a star beside that one. What's the answer for sin? While we were yet sinners, what did Christ do? He died for us. You, show, you share with them how he, he died in their place. Romans 5.8. Then put a star beside Romans 10.13. What does that verse say? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. And it's that simple. Christ died for you. So if you'll admit you're a sinner, you admit that you deserve death, but that you believe Christ died for you, if you will call upon him, you shall be saved. And you see, as you share the Romans road within your testimony, you're giving them God's word. And that's where the power is. That's where the conviction of the heart comes from. The Bible says that the, the gospel, that what we just read, that's the power of God unto salvation. It's dynamite. And God's word is what draws sinners to Christ. It's like, how does God draw people to himself? His word. It's his word that draws people to himself. Well, we're his vessels to share his word. So as you share your testimony and your story and you lace it with these scriptures, it's powerful. And you may feel like, well, I'm not getting anywhere and they're not listening. No, they're listening. And the word of God is doing a work in their life. Because the Bible says that, that, well, look in your handout. I've got it. Rome, it. This isn't part of the Romans road, but I put this verse in here to encourage you. Look at Romans 10, 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. How does people exercise faith? It's the word of God that brings faith. It's the word of God. And so, so you know, think about that. God's, and by the way, in Romans 10, when it said faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, right before that, you know what he said? He said, how shall they hear, though, his word without a preacher? And preacher doesn't mean a pastor. Preacher just means a proclaimer. That's you, me, all of us that know him. He says, you know what? The word brings conviction. The word is, is powerful. The word is what brings faith in hearts. that has got to be shared. He, it's got to be shared. He said, how shall they hear without someone to proclaim it to them? They got to hear it. So trust God's word to do the work as you share your story. The fourth thing is this. Number four, expect God to use you. In other words, do this in faith. Expect him to use you. God used this woman at the well to touch many lives. Here's a woman that's had five husbands. She's living with a guy. Her life, obviously, uh, you know, we, we don't know all the details, but it appears that she had a pretty rough past. But her past did not matter in the sense that God still wanted to use her. Is it, it, it's, it's interesting that some of the people in town believed on Christ right away when they saw the change in the woman. When they heard her testimony, they obviously knew her past, and they immediately believed on Christ because of her saying. Look at verse number 49, I'll show, or 39, I'll show you that. Verse 39, it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Now, 
we already said this, some of the people didn't believe right away. They were like, oh, no. But guess what? She had planted a seed. She piqued their curiosity and their interest. And now they were open to hearing more. So Christ comes behind her, tarries there two days, waters the seed that she planted, and then many more got saved. And now how do we apply that to our life, church? I want to encourage you, all right? Sometimes when you share your story and you give your testimony, you will be able to lead a person to Christ on the spot. They'll be ready. They'll be ready. And you'll be able to actually, like my brother said, Dan, do you want to trust Christ? I'm like, yeah, I do. He said, well, let's pray. Right then I prayed and I asked the Lord to save me. My brother, same thing happened to him. Remember, he was in a car, guy witnessed to him. He got saved. He was ready. And there'll be certain people you can lead to Christ after work or during break at work. You'll be able to lead them to Christ uh, there, you know, in the backyard over the back fence so to speak. There are, there are people that you will be able to, to lead them to Christ. Then there's others that it'll begin to create a thirst in them. It will begin to create a hunger in them. In your handout, it says to know more about Christ. What you share with them as you share your story, it's going to begin to create a hunger and a thirst in them to know more about Christ. But when you share, it says in your handout, when you share your testimony and you share God's truth, it is never in vain. God will always use it. So expect God to use you. Expect God to work through you. If, let me ask you a question. Look up here just a moment. If God can use a woman with a tainted and immoral past like this woman, can he use us, yes or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he can use us. He can use us. Now, I just want to encourage you today, before you kind of you know, getting in the going home mode here. I want to share this with you, all right? No, I'm serious. I, I know, I know. We got the last blank filled in. It's time to go home, right? No, seriously. I, I want to encourage you for a minute. There are people that you can impact with your story that I will never, ever, ever be able to impact for two reasons. Number one is I may never meet them. Number two, you are going to have a connection with them because of your past and their past that I don't have with them. So there are people God wants you to reach that I can never reach. Never. And there are times when people in their lost condition, they're not going to come to church maybe, but they'll let you talk to them. And you might be able to lead them to Christ right where they're at. Instead of the mindset of, well, I've got to take them to church so Pastor Dan can preach to them and talk to them. No, you may be the vessel that God wants to use to bring them to Jesus. Amen, church?